Hey guys, so today I am actually packaging up albums I sold and I was going to do it just off camera but I had a few people ask me if maybe I could make a video on how I package everything up and how I send them off myself and everything. I figured I could do that. Everything on the floor here are albums I just sold yesterday. I did a huge sale on my Instagram or my sale and trade Instagram. If you want to check it out, go ahead and look there because everything in the back there, um, like these, these and everything here, are stuff I have not sold but everything on the floor here I did sell. I guess maybe I can talk about prices as well just overall how I like to sell things. So usually I will sell albums without the photo card because these are like a lot of my extra copies. That's in like most cases. There are some times where I will buy like extra copies because I missed out on the pre-order cards the first time because I didn't realize that a certain site did pre-order cards. That was the um, case for Cravity. I don't collect Cravity cards, but I originally bought them off a site that didn't do pre-order cards and then I found out another site did do pre-order cards and I really wanted them so I ended up repurchasing and now I'm just selling like the albums with the photo cards but without the pre-order cards, if that even makes sense. But yeah, so a lot of these don't come with cards, but any album I sell that uh, doesn't come with any cards or whatever, I will make it much cheaper. So if it's an album that doesn't come with any inclusions at all, it's just like the album by itself, I usually will sell that for 8 USD. I am Canadian but I like to use USD because I feel like everyone does, even like all around the world I feel like people use USD. If it has like a couple inclusions, like no selfie cards, I kept those, but I left something like a lenticular or a postcard or something, then I'll make it 10 USD. But if it comes with all the inclusions, for example, this Cravity album, it comes with literally everything. So I just charge 15 USD. Same with that Idol album right there. Um, that one's actually sealed. I don't collect G Idol cards at all. I just kept it sealed. It's a long story why I have extra copies. Um, so that I also just sold for 15 USD. Also, if the album is damaged, one of my 80s albums came damaged and I'm selling it. The damage isn't like major, but I still feel really bad because I'm not selling them with the cards anyways. So I feel like if I didn't really discount that then I would feel kind of bad so I made the damaged album 5 USD. Those are just my pricings when it comes to the albums but of course I still have to charge shipping and this is where I personally kind of lose out because I don't charge people that much for shipping. I actually pay most of the shipping myself but I don't charge people the full amount because I feel like no one would buy from me if I did. <laughs> Honestly like it's really expensive to send stuff off in Canada like I, when I did my giveaway, um, I sent an album to the Philippines and it cost me almost $80. Yeah, so, and it was a giveaway album, so they didn't pay anything. And that's the reason why I don't send albums internationally, only within North America, the US and Canada, because it's just way too expensive. And if I quoted someone the price it actually costs, they would just back out anyways. That's why I don't sell to people internationally. That's literally the only reason because I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to waste my time either. So yeah, <laughs> it's just way too expensive. This A Pink album to like the UK, it would cost like $40 in shipping and I'm sure you don't want to pay that. <laughs> so that's the reason why. If it's like an album like this Itzy album or this Ace album or this Cravity album, they're not too heavy and not too bulky and big. I just charge $6 shipping, that's 6 USD. It's actually slightly more, obviously, but it is fairly close to the shipping I actually pay for it, so yeah. And also, usually the albums I sell don't come with inclusions, so I don't want you to pay too much anyways. I don't mind like paying it mainly myself. And, um, and if it's a bigger album, say like these The Boys albums, they're a bit taller. They're not that heavy, but they're taller. And um, oh, also the NCT 2020 albums, they're very heavy and thick. So I will just charge eight USD rather than six. I know it's not that much more, but um, yeah. So, and if it's like a super heavy big album, like say a photo book or something, I think I'll charge like 10 to 12. Anyway, so that's it for pricing. This is what I personally charge because I've had some other Canadian sellers come to me saying, how do you get the shipping so cheap? Six dollars? What? I'm like, no, it's much more than that. That's just what I personally charge. I like to make things as cheap for the buyer as possible. I will write everyone a note. Um, if it's a box style packaging like the Cravity album, I'll put 
um, the note and freebies inside the box, but yeah, everything else I kind of just put on the outside. I guess I can show a note, for example. We'll show this one. I usually like tend to write the same things. I'll write like, hello, thank you for buying. I hope the albums get to you safely and please let me know when they arrive. That's usually like, I think I've said that for like everyone. I have to write like their um, Instagram at whoever bought it and then I'll keep that with the album so I don't forget who bought what. If they make it very clear on what groups they like and whatever, I'll like give them as much freebies as I can, especially if you bought an album from me that doesn't have any inclusions inside. I will try my best to give you as many freebies as I can. Also, I like doing that because I have so many freebies, like from trades, people always give me freebies and the stack is growing and growing. I like to give them away to people as well. Yeah, if you make it clear that you like a lot of groups and certain members even, I'll give you the members you like. I'll just give you the biggest stack of freebies. <laughs> so I do all that first. I did all of this last night. Anyone who bought from me, I looked through their account and just, <laughs> I know I feel like I go on major creeper mode, but I just like to give away freebies. So I'm all ready to package them up. I figured I would do that on camera. I don't want to show all of them because I feel like this video would be too long. I can show a couple for example. So um, over here I have my bubble mailers. Albums like that red velvet one could probably fit in the ones in the front, but obviously I feel like the rest will have to go in the bigger ones right there. Um, so yeah, we can do that now. I have a crap ton of bubble wrap because I actually saved all of my bubble wrap. Unless it was like very little bubble wrap, then I just throw it out. But if I got like a lot, then I will save it so I can reuse it. You may have noticed in my like monthly update videos, I have a crap ton of bubble wrap in the side of my like like dresser here. <laughs> That's kind of like where I keep them. You can buy them at the stores, but I like to reuse because I buy a lot of albums. Obviously you will need bubble mailers. I usually send things off in bubble mailers unless it's something that's very fragile. Like uh, for example, I recently sold G Friends Song of the Sirens album and you may know how fragile that album is. It's like, yeah, if it's a very fragile box packaging, like not box like the Cravity album, but just a very thin material. It's like a box material, but very thin. That must be sent in a box, but usually I will um, bubble wrap them and then put them in the bubble mailers. We have this size right here. Okay, this is the same one. These I got from Staples. They um, These work perfect for Kino albums and also I'd probably say like the Reva Festival album from Red Velvet. I'd say those would fit perfectly in these ones, the um, 8.5 by 11. Yeah, those are good. These actually, I don't send albums in, in these. I bought these for like maybe big postcards I'm trading or something. So, <laughs> But these are usually the bubble mailers I'll use for any albums. Um, other than super small ones or kinos. Um, these ones I got from Walmart. Oh, here we go. Here's the size. It's 10 and a half inch by 15 and a quarter inch. I will usually try to stack up on these because, yeah, I go through these a lot. And yeah, so those are usually the two sized. I do have smaller than this, but no albums fit in there. Only use those for like super, uh, super big um, postcards or something. Also something you might want to invest in is one of these like packing tapes, I guess. Yeah, this I this like holder thing I already owned. When I run out of uh, tape, I just buy new rolls. I might need a new roll soon. It's getting kind of low. And then I have my scissors here to cut the bubble wrap. Actually, let's package up these The Boys albums. I sold both of them, thankfully. I actually saved these, like this thing from when I originally bought it from the seller because it has these and it will like dent. I mean, it kind of already did dent <laughs> the album, which is so sad. But um, in shipping, I feel like it would be even worse. So um, definitely put a cardboard if you're selling these specific albums like that. And then I have my freebies right here. I thankfully have really um, tall bubble wrap, I guess. Like it's long, I guess, this way. So it would be good for these albums. I'll kind of, like this bubble wrap is pretty big, so I will need to cut it. But I usually put it kind of close to the end, but leave it a little bit. So maybe like here. Hold on. So I'll take this. Then I'll just start wrapping it. I'll probably do it one more. This is a very thick bubble wrap, so that might be enough, but I'm going to do it one more. Okay. And then I will cut it here.
Then let's turn it this way, look like that. Then I will take my tape and I will tape it down like that. And then, so I have all of this extra on the side, then I will cut it like literally like this. Sometimes I usually struggle with this. Um, it ends up hurting my thumb. <laughs> That wasn't too bad, not a very clean cut, but I feel like I left a little bit too much. Uh, I think I'm gonna cut more. <laughs> Push it up a bit. There we go. With these extra bits, I just throw them out. Sometimes if I have a big enough bit here, then I'll save it, but even this is a little bit too um, small. Then I'll take more of my, um, what is this called? Tape, oh my gosh. And I will, okay, can you see this? <laughs> I'll put it up here. And then I will go like this, like that. And then I'll do that on the side. I'll also do them in the middle too. This is all ready to go. This is a very good quality bubble wrap. It's the thick one. So this one will definitely be okay to put in a bubble mailer. Hopefully this will actually fit though. These albums are pretty, pretty tall. I will take one of these bubble mailers, the big ones. And I will put that in. Oh, it's a tight fit. I had to do that off camera because yeah I didn't want you to see me struggle <laughs> but that is a very tight fit I have sold albums like this before where I had to tightly fit it in and it did arrive safely so don't worry this is totally fine as long as you bubble wrap it okay they might have to like snip this <laughs> but yeah so there it is in there it's very secure it has that extra bubble wrap layer inside the bubble mailer so it is very protected and then I will just like like this seal it and you just um peel this off. I will also show you how I work my, because I even send them off myself. I don't go to the post office. No, I do not like going there. <laughs> I do not like going to the post office. The post office ladies are so mean. I don't like dealing with them, so I do everything myself because uh, I do have a, um, a business account on Canada Post, so I do everything myself. I create the labels myself, so I will show you how I do that as well. Next we can do this tiny little red velvet album I sold. Um, this one will probably fit in, no not this one, this smaller bubble mailer, so we'll see about that. I have a thinner bubble wrap. This one I forgot to include a note. Hold on, let me go write that really quick. Okay, I'm back with my note. Um, I don't know how I forgot that, but this one will fit perfectly with this bubble wrap. Okay, so that one is all ready to go, and let's see if that one will fit into the smaller bubble mailer. I really like the ones from Staples. I think they're really good quality, but the ones from Walmart are fine too. Yeah, this looks like it will definitely fit. Nice, that's a perfect fit, and there's lots of room as well. If I have like extra posters sometimes I'll sneak one in there like I'll just add it in there was a point where I had some like extra copies of posters and I just did not want them so I just like added them in some people's orders yeah maybe we can do one more before I start like the next segment of this video I guess next we can do this one this person bought two albums the itsy album and ace album and they also got the pre-order little postcards and tattoo so yeah, we can um, package up that one. If someone ordered um, more than one album, I will try to bubble wrap that a little bit more uh, just because I, I really don't want to risk the albums getting dented or damaged. I one time had, um, like I one time, this was many years ago, around the time I kind of first started selling albums, an album I sent, I, I guess I didn't use 
enough bubble wrap and it ended up getting dented i did refund them majority of the money i usually will like put it more over that way and then like cover it first then start wrapping it This one will have to go in the bigger bubble wrap. The reason why I like to leave some bits on the edge is because it does add that layer of protection on like the sides and also these bits like here, I feel like it kind of like protects the edges. So um, yeah, that's why I like to leave um, bits at the end and you know. <laughs> so yeah, that one's all ready to go. Bring out the bigger bubble mailer. As I said, this is usually the size I'll use because um, even if you have an album that's not as tall, you can still like bend it down to the to the size, if you know what I mean. Perfect. And there it is inside. As I said, you can bend it like this down to the size, nice and secure. I'm not gonna um, do that right now. I'll do that in a second. You guys kind of get the point on how to package them. Now I will show you guys how I weigh and measure the packages for shipping. I'm at my desk right now. This is where I do all of my measuring and weighing for the packages. Actually underneath my light right there is my um, little scale thing. It's actually a kitchen scale. It works perfectly fine for weighing packages. <laughs> so let me just get that. Here it is, it says Think Kitchen. <laughs> So let's move my keyboard and then you'll also need a ruler to measure so i just have like my ruler right here so this one actually on the canada post website they go by kilograms but this only has this one only has grams so i just like convert it to kilograms we can measure okay my desk is so dirty <laughs> we can measure the first package let's measure this one which is the red velvet one it shouldn't be that much okay you won't be able to see it though I'll have to look underneath. It is 273, so that would be 0.273 kilograms. I can remove it quickly, you might be able to see it. I guess I can zoom in a bit so you can see it better. Or maybe I will like change the angle to over here. I don't know, we'll see. Also my dad just started playing TV in the back, so if that's what you hear in the back, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot to measure it. So let's take my ruler. Um, it is by centimeters. This is in Canada. I don't know how it's like in America. Length would be 20 centimeters. And then width would be 21. Height is about three. Now I have the measurements I can show you on my computer now. This is the Canada Post website. I do have a um, business account with them. I obviously don't know how it works for the US and their postal service. I just, I'm from Canada, so this is what I do. <laughs> Here is where you would fill out the person's address and whatnot, so um, let's just like make up a random name, Katie. I know last name is not one word, but anyways, and then um, so country let's just say United States, you would type in their address here. I'm not going to click it because the automated thing shows my address for some reason, so I'm just going to like make up an address. I just looked up this random address on the internet. I'm sorry, like if this is someone's address. I just looked it up on the internet. So let's say that we're sending the package to this address in LA for a phone number. It says it's required, but I will usually just put zeros like that because I don't ever really ask them for their phone number. I feel like it's unnecessary. Scroll down so you don't see anything else. So the length in centimeters, it was 21 by 20. Height was 3. And the weight was 0 0.273. So that's that. And then I'm not going to save it. Next. So and then it comes to the shipping prices. You can choose. This is what I usually do because as I said before, I charge people a super cheap amount for shipping. I usually charge six USD for everything. And this is what it costs for the tiny red velvet album. So I feel like the others, it would be more than this. I would usually choose the first one here. Then I would press next. 
and then I would say return to sender and I usually will say gift you have to type this for custom so I just write album and then I will just usually write what I sold it for so eight actually I sold this for ten ten dollars and then 0 0.273 quantity one then next okay and then I would say add to order for those two the boys albums this is what it costs for those um, I only charged the person $8, but the albums already don't really come with the inclusions, so I don't want to make them have to pay this, and this is also a reason why I don't like sending international. The US is as far as I will go, um, so yeah, I will choose the small packet air. Um, it unfortunately does not come with tracking, but anytime I have sold to anyone, I've always used small packet unless they were willing to pay for the tracking um it always arrived to them so i have no problem using this it's really up to you if you feel uncomfortable then don't buy from me but i just wanted to show the different prices i'll be paying majority of the shipping but as i said i'm totally fine with it the person who i sold the ace and itsy albums to live in canada so the plus if you live in the same country as me the absolute cheapest shipping with no tracking number is actually the same price as it being tracked so um, I will actually just choose the tracking number then if it's the same price like regular parcel and expedited parcel they're the exact same price so I will just choose the one that includes tracking just wanted to show the different prices from America as well as Canada I'm not going to show any more than this I will type everything properly with the person's address and then I will um, update you guys from there. I basically just went through the order, I said, okay, purchase it, and then I entered my credit card number. Well, my credit card number is already saved, and I didn't want any, like, it's not, my whole card number doesn't show, but I still don't want, like, anything showing. The real person's address is written here, that's why I'm covering it. So basically now I have bought it, I just need to print off the labels, so I just say print your labels here, and then the whole PDF will show up, and you basically just hit print. Um, you obviously will need your own printer to be able to do this. I will go ahead and print that and then I'll show you the very last step. So I printed the label. I'm not going to show it. I mean, I can cover a majority of it. Um, so this is what it looks like on the bottom. So that's what the label would look like. Basically, the last thing, I guess these are not really needed, but because you can just tape the label on the package if you want. But these little pouches, they are free from Canada Post, so I actually need to order more. I'm running out, but they're just like a thing that holds the label. So you just put the label in there and then peel it off like this. You just like peel the whole thing off and stick it right on your package. I'm not going to show that on camera because I don't want any information showing. So you'd open this up, you stick the printed label in there peel that off and then stick it right on and then it's all ready to go and then I would just walk over to the little drop off like out box like mail out box I guess I can quickly like show later tonight when I drop the packages off what I do and then I guess that will be the end of the video basically all I do to sell and package up things myself. It is so much easier than going to the post office because like any time I have been to the post office, all the workers are like really rude and they seem really impatient and usually there's long lineups and then when you're filling out all this stuff it's like time consuming and um, it kind of puts a lot of pressure on you especially if you have a lot that you're sending off. Even more pressure when there's a line. The only place I have to go is walk over to the mailbox thing which is like two minutes away from my house. I hope this was informative and helpful and if you have any questions let me know. I'll try my best. I don't know how anything works in the US or like anywhere outside of Canada. I don't really know so sorry about that but um, that is basically it and I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. Bye!